Hi guys, welcome to this week's weekly twin flame reading. I was hoping to air the sun sign readings first, but I was called to do this first because this is where I need to be. And the sun sign readings um, need to be done with care. And I know everyone's waiting for them. They will be out very soon ASAP. In saying that, let's recap. Last week, we had Divine Feminine. She was working with balancing karmic scales, six of pentacles. And what was she doing? She was working with her wish, understanding that the key to her destiny was always in her hands and releasing herself from the cage herself right raising vibes and what needed to be done with that energy and then really about understanding it was time with the four of swords energy to rest and then that's where her victory was and regain the momentum and clarity and then it was really about Ten of Cups, creation of Ten of Cups. And I know Divine Feminine really wants to see her Ten of Cups. Now, Divine Masculine was having a death and transformation, a new beginning. We know Divine Masculine energy is on a journey of self-discovery, right? And figuring out what they want to put in their cup. But it was about ending drama, being more generous, grounding the ener energy, and really transforming with higher self to learn how to tell truths with the King of Swords energy and be ambitious about it, and the creation of a path that wasn't there before with the Chariot energy. And now using female energy now to help restore balance and creation of a path that wasn't there before, a healing victory. Now I wanna tell you, it was made very clear to me after when I was taping the, the cards that they wanted me to see divine feminine energy got the magician and it's all about creation, destruction, creation, destruction, creation, destruction. And divine masculine, they wanted me to see in the chariot card that the chains have been broken. Whatever that means, the chains have been broken. And, you know, I did a reading that I felt very called to be a twin flame reading and I was channeling, you know, the princess and the frog. And I'm telling you, I've had a, a really long week. I really am going through something with my karmic relationship and really understanding it's the end and it's part of my negative cycle and purging really the end of what is negative for me and what charges my negative cycle and I'm like literally have had the rug ripped from out under me and I've all become sick because I have to deal with it and it's right there in front of my face and it no matter how much I don't want to let it go I have no choice I have to let it go it like source has and the universe has just Pulled the rug from right out underneath me and it has to I have to move on now and I have to continue to create with my positive charge and understand that my twin flame is part of my path and it's just part of my path and to create with the energy and I was out with my karmic I don't even like you know I don't understand why people say the labels like eh. you know I was out with this person that I'm ending this relationship with and I had been channeling the princess and the frog and he looks over in the grass and he picks up something and I was wondering at the time you know have, have I made the right decision should I still try to work this out like still trying to work this out even though I know it's time wake up right it's time and he pulled something out of the grass and he goes I have to give this to you and he gave this to me And then I just really understood why. Because I am here and I'm gonna do the work 
and I look forward to meeting up with my divine counterpart when I do again. And I have completely surrendered and accepted to the fact that he is working on becoming whole and restoring balance and healing. And that I send him so much love and, you know, I'm waiting. Now, well, I'm not waiting. I'm continuing on with my life, right? But I've talked so much. It's just time. It's just time. It's time to also get on the read. I'm I'm continuing on my healing path and doing what I need to do and harmonize and just hanging tight till I know when it's divine timing and it'll be the right time that he returns. And is it a struggle some days? Yes. But I understand there's other things I came here to do. And I, I've just found peace with that. Uh, you know, you have enough tower moments and you just find peace with that. Now in saying that, we're going to do a mirror reading. Divine feminine energy, divine masculine energy. And we're going to see what's happening. Because the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon are... dancing that's what I just I feel like right now the sun and the moon are dancing we're having a completion and a beginning that's the energies that we're in right now okay speaking of healing and look there's a star this is healing now in that four of swords energy that we're shifting away from till we find our clarity and that's where our victory is Oops. Okay. okay okay and look the hierophant in there is what i mean there's the meeting of the the moon and the sun and there's the keys literally the coming together of the energies the key is there the key is there with higher self with... and we've got the wheel of the year which is the wheel of fortune and look the wheel turns this is beautiful energy and this is all because um, we add that positive charge and we continue to integrate with higher self and look Divine Feminine, we have got death and transformation. And we've restored something from our past. We've healed something from our past through this experience. We've given back. And look, talking about the completion, there it is. The world. This was the card I was called to have here. And I talk so much and I wanted to get on with the reading because I know you guys, your time is precious. And I appreciate you all joining me here. Thank you so much. Um, this is the same card and it's the world tree and very similar anyways, they're different, but they're similar and we have the coming together. We have the seasons, the cycles, understanding how we're going to manifest with cycles and understanding the seasons and why we use them. And then the meeting of the sun and the moon and the serpent and then the bird and the transformation of it all. The all coming together of it all. And then we have the world here. And I'm going to keep it like this because I feel called to do so. And their fire power put an end to that ego games beautiful great job divine feminine energy i love it now divine masculine let's see what's happening how divine masculine is mirroring divine feminine this week with the star and please guys remember when you're healing use self-care you know and know that time with mother earth then you don't have to feel like it's solitude and you can recharge and raise your vibes. 
Temperance. Temperance and the star. That's gorgeous. So divine masculine energies got temperance. I feel like they're just pouring out the past. Like, blah. It's done. They're ready for the sun to shine. They're ready for a new day. And divine, their divine feminine is on their mind. Big time. And there's a heron in the background. And it means something. It's a message for someone. This is definitely connecting to that sun energy with that new moon in Aries. And spring. Spirit. Spirit's presence. Nature is so healing. It's going to be so, so beautiful to spend time with those flowers. The plants and the animals. These cards have nothing to say, I guess. You know, I was wondering. It, get, I feel called for this one. Yeah, Nine of Swords. And that is very well feeling attacked from your past. Like there's a transformation at hand here, mirroring. Cause we know when we raise our vibration, we're connected, right? But it's like this transformation is here. There's a serpent that's wrapped around one of these swords. And it's like literally your past is crumbling in front of your face, but also attacking you at the same time. But there's nowhere to go but to transform. So there, there is, there is a transformation no matter what. We're being pushed. We're being pushed to purge and to transform and to create with responsibility with that spark. With love and harmonization with the people around us. Not hurting the people we love. Playing the ego games. And when I was shuffling the cards, the Ace of Wands popped out. So that's definitely a message. Okay, with the wheel here, we have the Princess of Pentacles. And you know what? This, a Princess of Pentacles is someone who's on a spiritual quest. You know, spending time with nature, learning how to ground their energies, their visions. But I really feel like even too, this is once again, the presence of how Divine Masculine feels about his Divine Feminine. And what's happening here? And like willing to do the transformation because like there is love. And then we have the seven of swords here with death and transformation. And I love it in this deck because it's just the moon's energies and it's just like walking away, walking away from the BS. Just walking away, goodbye. And such like, yeah, I gotta go. And creating with the Ace of Wands. And there's an activation there. Like there's such an intense energy of the spark. There's such, and it's, it came from such a sorrow. Yes, but such a healing sorrow. Like it, it was a dark storm. Divine masculine energy really wants the sun to shine. But this spark is really going to help. It's going to help to heal. And of course, that's where the Six of Wands is here. And look, we're going to go from the Ace of Wands to the Six of Wands. And look at the shift in that energy from this. This is beautiful. Okay, now I want to see as I was um, channeling connection of sun and moon and completion of cycles and new beginnings and that's kind of what this card's about and its presence was here and what's happening. I was called to have 
an activation of what the moon, we're going to say activation with the moon, an activation of the sun and the coming together of the energies. Okay. So, oh, moon has two. Wow. Well, there is the world. And then we have got the Knight of Cups. Or the Knave of Cups. And let's see the sun. Well, that's beautiful. The Ace of Cups. Okay, let's just see how it's all meeting together in the middle to restore balance as we know the time we are in. Okay, we have two cards. Okay. We have got the five of discs, which is the five of pentacle worry, to the four of discs stability. And look, we're just going to create balance, make something stable. And that's the coming together of the energies. Now, the message of the knave of chalices. A woman is carried into the air by birds. The load on her back seems very heavy and yet she is smiling. She seems to be happy to have a flock of helpers carrying her along to a destination. The woman is fortunate that a creative solution has literally carried her in the air. The birds are taking turns carrying the woman to wherever she is going. They do this to conserve their energy so they can support the woman's needs. If the woman hadn't accepted help, she would have grown tired on her journey. The birds are unexpected blessings. This card seems to create a solution will come to you when you least expect them. So when you least expect them, creative solutions are coming. And that's like reason the vibes are coming to help. Calling in your soul tribe. Now, look, we have this card here again. Like, I'm so excited. What a beautiful reading. The world. A fairy sits with animals, birds, reptiles, and bugs under the light of a waxing moon. She protects all life and understands how interconnected everything is. This card challenges us to understand the threads of the web that connects all aspects of life together. The fairy sits peacefully with a select representative of nature. She has great compassion. This gathering reminds us that we can live in harmony with one another without seeking to destroy. The circle of life is complete and the great work is done. And that is the beautiful blessing right there. What a beautiful gift. Thank you. Thank you, moon energies. The message from the Ace of Cups, sun energy. From the limitless light, the soul receiving love. The soul receiving love. From the limitless light of the heavens, I open myself completely to receive the light of the divine. I am the vessel for the soul and the soul itself. And I am the continual flow that allows the cup of the soul to be always full and always emptying simultaneously. I am the cup that runneth over with joy and bliss and the divine light fills me completely. Yet you cannot fill a cup that is already full. And so I am in a constant state of receptivity and emptiness. That's a pretty powerful message, especially what we're going through right now with these energies pushing us to really purge and activate our positive patterns to move forward with 
creating our visions and harmonizing with the people around us, right? So we can raise the vibrations and heal, restore, rebuild, right? And sometimes we have to be an empty vessel to be filled back up. Hang tight. And that's really the shift that's happening in here. It's really the shift that's happening in between. We are going from worry to stability. And remember, this is just thoughts. A lot of the times our thoughts are keeping us in our negative charge. So if we can shift out and just be even generous, like add a positive charge, a positive thought for you to follow, then you can add another one and another one and then you can create action and work with your emotions and stabilize. And yes, your life changes and it's beautiful. And I just love that we have these cards here. It's beautiful. I wanna thank you for joining me here for this week's Twin Flame reading. I really appreciate you all so much. Thank you for joining me and spending your time here healing. Soon we'll get outside when it warms up. That shall be exciting. I'm looking forward to spring. The blossoming of the flowers, the green grass. Take care. See you again soon, guys.